here. He's part, he's part of our families. He feels what we feel, suffers what we suffer, surrounds us with his presence and his love. And I want people to know that that's what kind of God we have. Amen. Then they'll love him. You know, we love him because he first loved us. Right. And people, many people don't love him because they don't know that he loved them first. They don't know that he suffered with them. They don't understand. And that's our message in the pillars is that's who God really is. Amen. I want them to know. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen.
any testimonies to share about Raymond? Uh, the, the, the mic is here. Kyla, why don't you start us off? Come on up. Give her a handout. So now I 
I um, uh, know that she uh, drives from her house to a uh, uh, church. And her house is like a mile from here, maybe, I think. But um, it was pretty. I was surprised that um, to um, find out that, that, that she had her, uh, her license. <laughs> because I didn't um, uh, uh, know that because, like um, I said, Wayman had been uh, driving over all the time and all the times that I had um, seen them, she would be in the back and he would be up and driving. We miss him. <laughs>
for a short period of time. And they went down the tube when they lost the concept of justification by faith and liberty of conscience. Mm -hmm. So it moved a little toward England, but not quite. But it crossed the Atlantic. And God said, if you, when's the last time you read the Declaration of Independence? Mm -hmm. It's not a very long one. In fact, where the, there was a man that spoke a little bit ago here. Yeah, you was back seat. I want to talk to you about something that um, you said something about Jesus Christ was not mentioned in the in the first draft or the, one of the drafts. I want to get that. Uh, I have some of the originals, but I haven't seen that one. But I need to have it. <laughs> uh, one of the paragraphs was taken out, and that had to do with slavery. Thomas Jefferson put within the, the Declaration of Independence that the slaves would be free. Two nations or two states protested. They said if if those if that's left in there, then we will not join the Union. And so the men compromised, and it was taken out, and they joined the, joined the uh, United States of America. But there's that and, and some of the other things in the Bill of Rights. Finally, these principles came out, and there was a freedom of slavery. But in the Declaration of Independence, under God, or under the Creator, there are three things that are brought out specifically in the second, in the second paragraph. Do you recall what they are? God has given us inalienable rights. Yeah. Right? What is first? Life. Liberty. And the first of that, the uh, pursuit of happiness. Now it says a pursuit. It does not say you get it. It's a pursuit of happiness. But before you can have a pursuit of happiness, you must have liberty. Before you can have liberty, you have to have life. Before you can have life, you have to be you have to have justification by faith. Mm -hmm. Romans 5:18. By one man's righteous act, all men have received justification of life. Life liberty, pursuit of happiness comes out of justification by faith. Amen. That is the message that God has given to you and to me. To study it, to experience it, and to share with others. Amen. I think that's enough. I do want to give my tribute to Raymond Joseph. You know, the first time I met Raymond was when he came back from his vacation. You know, we started coming to this church last year, you know, September or thereabout, and they were on vacation. So when they came back, I think it was November, and he was sitting right at the back there, and you know, we were doing Sabbath school, and you know, I hear this guy talking, I was like, whoa! Oh man, who's that? That must be the preacher for today. <laughs> you know? And I said, wow. So when I went outside, I saw him walking along the car and I said, you're gonna preach today? He was like, no, I don't preach. I said, you should be a preacher, man. You know? And you know, we get to know each other, we talk a lot and things like that. And, you know? But one thing I can say about Brother Raymond, you know, he's a man of God and he loves God. He wants Christ to return soon, you know, and I tell you, you know, when he has those Bible studies and we do those studies and he has taught me so much. And one of the things I remember from Brother Raymond is this song, you know, and if you want to join me by singing it, I don't know the words of it all together yet, but I'm still trying to learn it. It's in number, and this song speaks of Brother Raymond a lot, 375. Three seventy-five, and if you know Brother Raymond, you would agree with me with this song because you know when I heard of his passing, this is a song I remember. You know, he, he did one of the Bible studies. You know, work for the night is coming.
and it works straight up until that time. Amen. And this speaks a lot to about Brother Ray. Imagine the resurrection mm -hmm. when the graves are going to be open 
and the dead in Christ are going to pop up from the grave like popcorn. <laughs> what an event that will be. Can you imagine? Those who have gone on lame and sick, they're going to arise with the peak of hell. Can you imagine? 2020 vision. And we're going to be in, a, in, in full of energy. Wow. I don't want to miss that event. And I, it's something I think. When I think about the Hebrew boys, I, sometimes I envy them. Because they were able to, to stand before that fiery furnace. And they were able to say to the king, we're not going to bow. And, uh, and, uh, and the thing that really got to me is that they said the God whom we serve is able to save us. But what they said next was really amazed me. They said, even though he chooses not to, we still not going to bow. They knew that God could save them, but they did not know if he would save them. And <coughs> God didn't see it fit to spare Raymond's life, but he died in faith, amen? amen. And I hope that when my time comes, and maybe if you hope the same thing when your time comes, that we'll be faithful until the end, amen? amen. And uh, what a day of rejoicing that's going to be. When we see the king face to face, and those who have gone before will meet on a beautiful show. I want to be that number. Amen. When the saints go marching in, may God bless us. Amen. <coughs> as I finish. But I was just sitting there thinking, what did Raymond and I talk about all the time? I mentioned <laughs> some things this morning. But you know, we, you know, a lot of buddies talk about trivial stuff. You know, what's going on with the truck? <laughs> I love the truck. L-U-V, not L-O-V-E. <laughs> Raymond didn't care about that kind of stuff. He was he was laser focused. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that was always such a bless, blessing to me to be reminded of what's important. Because ministry consumed him. And I say that in a really good positive way. Amen. Oh yeah, he could be uh, he he could uh, say things off the record that uh, we'd have to remind each other that I'm probably not going to go there. <laughs> there were more than once that I said, Raymond, we're not always good for each other. That's about as trivial as it got. But it didn't last long. It was always back on target. Back on target. You know, this picture of Raymond down here, when was that taken, Buffy? I'm actually not sure. Someone... Made that for, for me? Not very long ago, was no. it? You know, it reminds me of, um, of, oh, this was 25 years ago in Philadelphia. I was talking to Gene Sakara. And I understand that Jack's not really doing super well right now. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. But Gene showed me a picture in her Bible. And I said, who is that? She says, that's Jack. <coughs> when he was about 25 years old. You know, he was completely bald when I knew him. And that's been 30 years. I said, you carry that around like that, Gene? She said, yes, I want to know what he's going to look like when Jesus comes. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought of that when I saw his picture. That's the only Raymond I've ever known, but I'll tell you what, 
When Jesus comes, the new stuff we get is going to be awesome. <laughs> and the older I get, the more I appreciate it.